there is a real Pete Gray. Tonight's film, a biographical dramatization, contains fictionalized events in his life and baseball career. Pete Gray was born on March 6, 1915 in Nanticoke, Pennsylvania. He still lives there. Play ball. Ah, you take Peter. Ah, oh, ma. Peter doesn't play, you don't play. The guys don't want him. He's just a baby. He's ten years old. You play ball when you're ten years old. Ah, oh, ma, give a guy a break. I had to... Whitey! Gee whiz. Ah, oh, Peter. Hi, Mom. Oh, why such a long face, huh? You go play ball with your brother, huh? Great! We've got Scott. Okay, Henry. We've got Pete. Oh. Where's my glove? Come on, Pete. 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 Let's go now. Come on, you can hit the ball, Pete. Oh, don't worry about him. Let's get him, Pete. Come on, Pete. Come on, Pete, just hit the ball. One more. Let's hit it this time. Let's hit it right back on the field. Oh, don't listen to that. One more. One more. Come on, Pete. Let's get it off. Get off already. Come on, Pete. Let's do it. Let's do it now. We can do it. Come on, Pete. Come on. 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 What? Tony's a lefty. So what? So what? If he hits it to Biddy, we're dead ducks. These two guys switch. Just to be on the safe side, I want to strike this bum out. Now you're talking. Get out, guys! Let's get him! Come on, Tony. All we need to hit will be ahead. Strike one. It's all right, Tony. Now, come on. Come on, Bobby, come on, run, run, run. Let's go, Tony. Oh. What a lousy 
right. thing to do. It's a smart place, boy. Hey, Wishner, we chose Team Fair and Square. It ain't our fault your team wound up a little short-handed. Boom! <laughs> his matter. I'm scared. I Ah, thought... no need be scared. Just a little dirt, not to worry. <laughs> but here I am, one piece, good as new. Still you. You look so sad. For why? Eh? Tell me. Why did I have to lose my arm? Well, you had accident. It happens just like cave in and mine, but you lived, Pete. That is important thing. But it's just not fair. I know. I know. Even in this wonderful country, everything is not fair. But lots of things a person can do with just one arm. Can't be a major league baseball player. Can't play in Yankee Stadium with one arm. He looks like Kovetsky from Down at Mine. Big stomach. He drank a lot of beer? I think so. <laughs> so does Kovetsky. Things happen. You just never know. I know one thing. Without two arms, even Babe Ruth would be selling pencils. looking at the next middleweight champ of the world. Or, if not the next, the one after the next. And you know the first thing I'm gonna do with all those big bucks come rolling in? Buy a new bag? Hell no. I'm gonna get you a model, the biggest darn piano this town's ever seen. 
Ah, that'd be nice. Nice. <laughs> it's good to have dreams. Your brother, he has dreams too. You mean about playing in the Yankee Stadium? Yeah, he wants to play with Babe Ruth. Fat chance. Petey better wise up and get himself another dream. But if you help him, you must help him. Help him do what? Help him get to Yankee Stadium. What do you want me to do? Buy him a bus Nancy, ticket? Nancy, you are his big brother. You must help him. That's what brothers are for. In old country, when there's time for me to go to work in my... My brother, Stefan, he teach me. That's different. You had two arms. There are no one-armed baseball players, Dad. It's not like checkers. A guy needs two arms to play the game. Hey. He also need big brother to look out for him. He's better than two arms. You help your brother. Eh? Huh? Okay. Okay. Okay, Pete, get ready. Go for it, come on. Okay, get the throw back. Ready? Get under it. Come on, squeeze your glove. It's too floppy. Get under it. Look, Ma, I can't even play. You don't be late for supper, okay? Here you go. No more excuses. Great! Let's go home and try it. You have to get your shoulder into it. You have to shift the weight from your right foot to your left foot. Get your whole body behind the punch. It's the same in baseball. You notice every time you swing the bat, you almost always fall on your face? Okay. That's a little better. And now you have to start running more. Running where? Everywhere. It's good for your balance, good for your wind. It's called road work. Come on, don't drag those legs. Come on, keep them pumping. You can do it. Just work a little harder. Forgetting everything I told you. Balance. Keep your eye on the ball. I can't hit it. And there's baby Ruth at the plate, folks. Crying Shut up, as Jeff, usual. I hate your guts. Why don't you make me a little cry, baby? Shut up! Leave me alone. Just leave me alone. Good. Uh. Hang on to that feeling. You're gonna need it. Need what? Anger. Get angry and stay that way. Just remember, nobody's gonna roll on a red carpet for a one-armed lit lock. Anything you get, you're gonna have to fight for. I hate you. Whatever happens, don't ever let those bums get to you. Don't ever cry. Don't ever give them that satisfaction. <laughs> Better. Harder. Harder. That'll pull you to 
get yourself washed for supper. Okay. What are you making? Anything is better. Mm -hmm. I am worried about Peter. Why? Eh? Why are you worried? He's so excited about baseball season <laughs> starting. Excited he should be about baseball. Peter has suffered enough. Why oh, get his hopes up? So those boys can laugh at him. So he can have his heart broken. Mama, those boys, they will laugh at him, sure. But if Peter is ever going to do or be anything, he must turn his back on that laughter. He must. He has to. Come on, Petey, just make contact. You could do it. Just meet it, Petey. Just meet it. Want to meet him? Here. Want to shake hands with him? You can do it. <laughs> All right. Come on, Petey. We can do it now. Don't worry about it. Let's go. Okay, guys, get her up. Good. Welcome to Youngstown. Now, I want the infielders to go to the first base dugout, the outfielders to the third base dugout, catchers and pitchers to the bullpen. We'll tell you what to do when you get there. Go. Here we go. Uh, sorry, players only. I am a player. I'm sure you are, but we don't have time. I batted 381 at Three Rivers last season. This is a long way from Canada, kid. I didn't make an error all season. I know you're looking for a left fielder. This is Class A, kid. It's a big jump. Why don't we stop John and I'll show you. Sign says open tryouts. Look, kid. Come back some other time when there aren't so many people around. And we'll give you a look. I give you my word. I hitched all the way from Pennsylvania. Sorry, kid. Hey, Sarge. Hey, Pete, if it were up to me, you'd have been in uniform last December 8th, and we'd have had you in the Pacific kick em butt the day after that. <laughs> the war would probably be over by now. You hear what he's saying, Doc? The man's making sense. Pete, I'm sorry. Doc, there's a war on this. There's no time to be choosy. Pete, I can hit a ball 300 feet with one arm. You think I can't shoot a gun? Oh, come on, Pete. Be reasonable. It's funny. 
You don't look Japanese. You must be Hirohito's cousin. Pete, it's nothing personal. We couldn't take you if you had flat feet or asthma. Yeah, forget it. My mistake. A bunch of guys were interested in winning this lousy war. Pete, you're 4F. There's nothing any of us can do to change that. So relax. Enjoy it. Nice shot. I'm on a roll. One in a row. You're lucky. Better it where it's due. That was skill. No, I mean that you're going to war. Well, I hope I'm better with a rifle than I am with a pool cue. What I can't figure is, uh... What you hanging around for? Why don't you just go? That's just a couple of weeks. It's long enough for me to teach Kid Falco a lesson. Teach the crowd the lesson. Eight in the corner. Let's see it. That's it. Big surprise. What's Kid Falco to you? Well, for one thing, Falco's a comer. If I beat him, when I beat him, that makes me somebody. When I get back from kicking German butt, I'm not just some soldier boy from Nanako. I'm Whitey Gray, the guy who whipped Kid Falco. Whitey Gray? Here, Andy. Since when Whitey Gray? I was talking to a couple of guys over at Wilkes Bar last week. They put the bug in my head. They said in the fight game, you got to have a name that's short and catchy, something people remember, like Joe Lewis, Billy Kahn, Max Bear. This guy said Wishner sounds like a sneeze. Kid Falco any good? Somebody must think so. They're paying me 300 bucks to fight him. 300 bucks? You making that kind of money? Why am I playing you for lousy beer? Relax, kiddo. It's all I can afford. What, you spent it already? Yep. On what? My clothes, obviously. Hey, hey, wise guy. On the biggest darn piano this town's ever seen. Ma will love it. Ma don't play piano. It's owning it that counts. <laughs> the ownership. <laughs> Boys, but I'm glad you don't have to go. I'm glad you get to stay here and be with me. Yeah. So, you gonna go get a cup of coffee or something? I can't. I'm in the parade. Oh, did I tell you? Alice and Nick are getting married. You know, before he ships out. Isn't that romantic? Yeah. You told me. Oh. Hello. See you later. Okay. Hi, darling. Bye. Bye, Whitey. I know, Ron. Oh, she's a fight. Sure is a pretty girl. Yeah. Yeah, she sure does want to marry you. Now, what makes you think that? Well, she tells me everything. Hell, Nora just wants to get married, period. She probably figures another couple of months I'll be the only guy left in Anacook under 90. Ah, uh, you just be a modest. You're a good-looking guy. You dress good. Yeah. I mean, you're not in a class with Alan Light or me, but uh, you're all right. Yeah, I'm all right with Nora, anyway. Hey, look, I told Mom I'd pick up some groceries on my way home. I'll see you at the arena, huh? Put them away tonight. Hey, hey, Kid Falco is a gun. <laughs>
we go. What is taking you so long? Should have killed that rep when I had the chance. So how's my fighting? Well, there was severe hemorrhaging, but you rest assured he's gonna pull through. Uh, he's going to live? Oh, yes, Joseph. Thanks, God. Yes. You saying he's gonna be the way he was? No. I said he's going to live. What kind of an answer was that? <laughs> Doctor, you, you telling us he, he will have brain damage? It's possible. Now, we did all we could, Joseph. But only time will tell. I'm very sorry. Well, at least he's going to live. Yeah. We'll make a great pair. What has four legs, three arms, and one brain? Give up the Wishner brothers. Oh, Pete. God. You and Whitey aren't a pair. You and I are. Let's get married, Pete. How the heck am I supposed to get married on when I make playing semi-pro ball? Pete, you're not exactly a spring chicken. Don't you think it's time you grew up? Baseball's a kid's game. Maybe so. It's also the one thing I'm any good at. How many guys have what it takes to play professional ball? Nobody's knocking down your door, Pete. I'm gonna play Major League Baseball. <laughs> I don't, I don't mean to laugh, but do you hear what you're saying? Yeah. He only got one arm. I'll be damned. Where the hell? Stop it! It's not funny. Now, I was talking to Daddy, and he said that he would love to have you come work with him. Men's clothing. You do fine. Sure, I could specialize in the hard to fit. Don't be silly. I bet within a year, you would know as much about the business as Daddy does. I already know all I need to know. Not interested. You can play baseball on weekends. Tell your Daddy thanks. But I'm not interested in being a weekend ball player. Why not? Because weekend athletes don't make it to Yankee Stadium is why not. Neither do one-armed players. No, not if they don't try. You know what you're saying, don't you? Yeah. I'm saying I'm not going to give it up. But you're willing to give me up. Not if I don't have to. You are. <laughs> I don't believe this. You're giving me up. Oh. How many women do you think would be willing to overlook your handicap the way I do, Pete? I wouldn't marry you if you were the last man on earth. That mean I can't work for your dad? Yes, it does. the tryout? Look at this. I'm ready. Another million after that, huh? You will make it. 
Thanks, Papa. Maybe if I do well enough, Mama can quit working in the mines. <laughs> I better go. Where's Pete gone? Pete, where are you going? I want to play baseball. Well, you remember to... Balance, right? That's right. Right. See you, Whitey. All right. Beautiful music together, son. I hope so. Oh, we're going to pack them in. Pack them in. You are going to be the biggest thing to hit Memphis, Tennessee, since Barnum and Bailey came to town. I'm not a clown, Mr. Tatum. I'm a baseball player. Oh, I appreciate that, son. I do. I do. And for both our sakes, I hope you're the second coming to Ty Cobb. But you see, Pete, baseball is a, well, it's a sport for little boys. Grown-ups like you and me, it's a business. And you are going to sell a lot of tickets. Why don't you just buy yourself a freak show? <laughs> well, one day, maybe I will, Pete. Yeah. Maybe I will. Come on, shout, Frank. Go. Unhitch that trailer. How's the team look, Coach? Well, some of the boys are back, so I think right. we got a fair shot. Come on in, Al. Bring it in. This ways we would if that damn Tatum would keep his nose out of my business. I take that you're referring to Gray. Yeah. Right. Bring it in. Can he play? Mr. Bloom, with one wing, Joe DiMaggio can't play. Tatum rakes in the dough, and I look like a lunkhead trying to win ball games with one arm guy. I can't figure him playing the F you. Not me neither, but you know Tatum, if he thought he could sell two more tickets, he put a donkey at short and he lit a chimpanzee <laughs> pitch. Here he comes now. Here you go, left bell there. Me neither. Let him go. What position? Tatum wants him and left. Michelle Drake. Look at the cat dragged in there. It's your replacement. <laughs> Looks like the cat got his arm. You worried? The day I can't outplay a cripple is the day I hang up my glove. Hatfield. That's gotta be a fluke. What if it's not? Way out. Juggles. Yeah. 
here. Welcome to Memphis. I'm David Bloom, sports writer for the local paper. Mind if I sit down? Aggressive for a southern boy. You're pretty shy for a Yankee. You are a Yankee. Man, I cook Pennsylvania. Be friendly. Well, well. Nice town? Yeah, if you're a lump of coal, it's paradise. Would you care to talk about your own? There's nothing extraordinary. Keep your hands to yourself. What you about your right arm? I don't have one. Excuse me. Hey, sport. Why don't you let the lady alone? It just so happens the lady loves it. Don't you, honey? Let me go. Let her go. You plan to make me? Only if I have to. With one arm tied behind your back. Boxer? He's a baseball player. You're kidding. No. Third base, get one in cover. Come on. Bop, boop. All right. That's it. That's it. Watch Watch it. Good 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 All right. Good nice throw. Here you go. Way to cover that ball. Yeah. OK, good cover. Now, way to home. Wait, wait, wait. 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 Man on wait first, one out. Center. Come on, Anderson. Get a corn. <laughs> Hey, Gray, will you look where the hell you are? What's the matter? you left. I'm center. Come on, get back in position. Come on. You didn't call it. It was hit right to me. Yeah, you should be more aggressive, Henderson. You just stay where the hell you belong. Where I belong is in the majors. Where well, you belong, buddy, is in a side show. Fight, fight. Half a man, Gray. Half a man. Hey, that's my buddy. <laughs> Look at Sheldrake. Monkey see, monkey do. That's all he's good for. I'm free tomorrow night. Oh? Did you want to sit out of town, though? Now that's a low blow. Well, I'll take him. You can have the big tippers. Terrific. I need coffee. Hi. How are you doing? Okay. I want to thank you again for the other night. You should hang around here more. I bet a lot of guys try to get fresh with you. <laughs> Not that many. That. No, thanks. I know what I want. Roast beef sandwich and mashed potatoes and a glass of milk, please. I thought all you ball players like nice, thick, juicy steaks. I don't like steaks. Hi. Whatever you say. Kelly, give me a steak. Thickest one you have. Rare. Hey, hey, Annie. What's the idea of dumping us on this fat broad? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll show you a fat broad, wise guy. <laughs> hey, it's too bad the pork chops don't have this much meat on them. <laughs> Hey, will you keep it down? Come again. You heard me. I said pipe down. Oh. I'm sorry, soldier. Don't mind them. They're harmless. What's this? A steak. I sliced it up for you. This isn't what I ordered. I just thought... Nana, Josie. 
Suddenly remember not leaving a tip. I came back to apologize. For not leaving the tip? For walking out the way I did. You were just being nice. Well, that's all you know. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, if I get you weaned off our 30 cent roast beef sandwiches and hooked on our dollar and nickel steaks, they just might get round to painting the joint one of these days. <laughs> I'll be. You have teeth after all. Nice ones, too. Are they real? Come again? Well, I thought maybe that the reason that you didn't order steaks was because you lacked the wherewithal to chew them. Uh, <laughs> well, it's not teeth I'm missing. You mean your arm? Like you guess. Well, in case you don't read the papers, there's a war on Bub. There's lots of men with one arm these days. Lots of men with no arms these days. If you're smart, you'll corner the safety pin market and make a fortune. <laughs> Can I walk you home? First, you scare me, then you want to walk me home? Sure. <laughs> okay. This way. Well, here we are. Buckingham Palace. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Thank you again. Good night. Good night. Annie? Hmm? Would you go out with me sometime? Sometime, no. Saturday night, yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. I get off around six. You know how to dance, don't you? I thought there was supposed to be a war on. Life goes on. You're still playing baseball. I'm no Fred Astaire. <laughs> it's okay. You got four days to take lessons. So I'll see you around eight. Okay. Okay. Good night. Good night. Pete. Yeah. I haven't forgotten, you know. What? You still owe me a tip. <laughs> right. Pete. Yeah. Don't worry, I'm no Ginger Rogers. You had me fool. Good night. Night. One down in the sixth, and Boots Rundle will step in to face the lefty Chuck Terrell. Terrell's given up seven hits on the afternoon. Pete Gray is standing on first. He's already stolen one base this afternoon, his 42nd of the season, which leads the Southern Association. Rundles, who's grounded out and flied out, is a good contact hitter. And with the chicks up by one, Taylor may be playing hit and run in this situation. Terrell gets the sign and checks the runner. Spikes are flying high. Hey, what the hell are you doing? You know you had to throw a beat. Yeah, but next time I might not. Hey, folks. Drive that one-arm bandit in if you can. You know, this is going to sound like I'm fishing for compliments, but... I'm not, really. <laughs> I'm just curious. What? Well, I've seen a lot of guys coming in that restaurant trying to date you up. And they're not all like that masher. It goes with the job. Frankenstein's sister was a waitress. She'd have guys hidden on her. Of course, it helps with Betty Grable and Rita Hayworth aren't hanging around the neighborhood. Yeah, but why me? Well, you did stand up for me. They already thanked me for that. There's just something about you. Yeah, like what? The fact that I was leading with the wrong foot? <laughs> no. Just something.
Come on, give it a try. Come on. What the heck? That makes you special. Special's not bad. And that's just what those boys need to know. That being a little bit different is okay. All they need to know about me, they can read in the box scores. I'm sorry, but I'm not joining the Freaks of Month Club. Why don't we dance? Out of way, son. Uh. That was a nice catch, son. You want to try to trap the ball in there with your bare hands. You don't want it popping loose. All right. You're going to be late, dear. Okay. Last one, Nelson. Let's make it a good one. Bottom of the ninth. Two out. Bases loaded. Here's a high fly ball to Nelson Gary Jr. He's out! Out! We win! You bet we do, because we're winners. <laughs> I caught it just the way you showed me, didn't I? You sure did. Now, I got to go to work. So you, uh, you look after things around here, okay? All right. So long, huh? Hope you're going to be late. Hello? Helen! I was just going to call you in a little while. Uh-huh. Well, thanks for saving me the nickel. <laughs> well, as my husband says, every little bit helps. <laughs> Helen hadn't called. If only hadn't left the shirt in the ring. Be quiet. Why did they have to take his offer? I said it was burned badly. I'm not a doctor. It's a beautiful day outside, Nels. Why don't you go outside and play? I don't want it.
Just sits in there and mopes. He should be out playing with the other boys. Playing what? What's he going to play with one arm? Congratulations. Coming off the bench, hitting a pinch hit home run. Must make you feel pretty good, huh? Oh, hell, I should be starting. Now I feel supposed to be able to put him over the wall. Of course, you need two arms to do it. Ain't that right, Ray? If you say so. I say you couldn't hit a home run to save your life. Yeah? Well, you couldn't hit 300 to save your job. <laughs> hey, hey, Peter, you got a nickel or something on there? I gotta make a phone call. Thanks. Tearing up the Southern Association. What's that to do with us? Plenty. If he can do it, Nelson can do it. Why raise the boys' hopes? This Pete Gray is one in a million. If there can be one, there can be two. Nelson? How could you not be interested in a poor little kid who's lost his arm? You, you of all people. Oh, back off, Tatum. You're not interested in that little kid or anybody else. You're just trying to put more bodies in the stands. I spoke to that little boy's daddy, and he tells me just hearing about you has transformed him. And if just hearing about you can do that, can you imagine what meeting you might do for him? I won't do it. We've decided to bring this little kid out from California to meet his hero, Pete Gray, star of the Memphis Chicks. Now, Pete, trust me, trust me here. In terms of publicity, this is going to be a bonanza. When we get through with this thing, you could be elected mayor of Memphis. Let Mr. Bloom be the mayor. <laughs> well, it doesn't work that way. You're the one his old man wrote to. You're the kid's hero. Pete, this little kid is, well, he's got you up high on a pedestal. You are his shining light, his beacon of hope. What you're saying is I'm the one-armed geek. Oh, now, come on, Pete, come on, be reasonable. Any publicity that helps the team helps you, and vice versa. One hand washes the other. <gasps> well, no, I wouldn't know about that, would I? Pete, you have got the talent to make it in the big leagues. Now, there is no question about that. But, son, talent is not always enough. Now, this thing with the kid could put your name right on the map. And don't forget, the guys in the big leagues they got seats to fill just like everybody else. Am I right, David, or am I right? You're right. Get this straight, Tatum. I'll make the majors because I'm good enough, not because of any crummy stunt. That's enough. Now, that's just enough. Now, you seem to forget, Mr. Pete Gray, that you work for me. So from now on, all I want to hear from you when I say jump is how high you're going to cooperate in this matter. Do you understand me? That's an order. Your waiter takes your order, Tatum. All I take from you is my salary. Don't bring that kid out here. I don't want any part of your publicity stunt. Hey, son. We got some great news. We have all been invited to come to Memphis. You're going to meet Pete Gray in person. Really? Really. When? We're going to leave the day after tomorrow. I hope they'll like me. Of course he's going to like you. What will I say to him? Well, you just walk right after him and you say, put it there, Pete. Put it there, Pete. <laughs> Look at this. Two Nelsons. From your pal, Pete. The chicks 
will send up Sheldrake, Gray, and Jesse Matthews to face Chattanooga's Stu Barber here in the home field. Sheldrake, who's playing right today in place of the injured Dixie Dancer, is one for two with a long home run. His eighth of the season to dead center his last time up. Sheldrake started the day hitting 266 in his limited playing time. Sheldrake settles in. Barber looks in for the sign. Now he rocks into his motion. Here's the pitch. Look out. Sheldrake hits the dirt. And here we go. Sheldrake's on his way to the mound. Catcher Kraske's after him. And from the on-deck circle, here comes Gray. Now the players are pouring onto the field from both dugouts. We got us a real Donnie for a going. All right, come on, come on. Punch it up. Punch it up. Get out. Back to your bench. Get out of there. Come on, break it up. Let's have it. your teammate and they threw you out? That's right. Oh, that doesn't seem fair. Like my brother Whitey always said, I don't expect him to roll out the red carpet for a one-armed lit box. Is that all this bothering you? That and the fact that my batting average has dropped 20 points in the last two weeks. That's all? That's plenty. Well, I don't think it's gonna knock the war off the front page. <laughs> Pete, do you ever think about anything besides baseball? Like what? Like this. An ass crossed my mind. I heard about that little kid that's come to see you. Who told you about that? Mr. Bloom. <laughs> what time do you have? Like at 10.30. Well, I guess it's safe to say he won't show up. What kind of a man is he? Something must have happened. Maybe he's not feeling well. I can't believe he didn't show up. He didn't even call. Nelson was so disappointed. It's a nice party otherwise, though. You don't think he was in an accident, do you? I don't know what to think. I just feel so bad for your little boy. You come on out to the ballpark tomorrow. You think you'll be there? I can guarantee that. I'm really sorry. Well, good night. So, I'd like to punch his lights out. No offense. I would. And as long as you were drinking anyway, why didn't you just come to the party? There's plenty of booze. I said I wasn't going to show up. Well, they must have forgotten to tell the little boy, because he kept expecting to see his hero. I ain't nobody's hero, and I never said I was. All he wanted was to see you. Fine, so I meet this little kid, and they take our picture together, and Mr. Bloom puts it in his paper. And for one day, everyone says, isn't that just dandy? And then the day after that, everyone's forgotten about this poor little kid. And he's got to go through the rest of his life being ridiculed, pitied, stared at. Uh-uh. It's a charade, and I don't want no part of it. Oh.
always use a good hand. Just grab that. Thanks. Want to go see a ball game? Sure. Got a ticket? Nope. Then you have to come with me, won't you? Four for five yesterday. <laughs> I have to admit, I've had a pretty good week. Maybe I'm a good nut charm. Maybe you are. You want to go play catch? <laughs> Will you show me how to get the ball, my dear man? It's like magic. Well, heck, Nelson. Well, a good magician never gives away his secrets. Oh. Well, maybe I can show you if you promise to keep it under your hat. I won't tell anyone, just you and me, Pete. Okay. Anybody looking? Nope. Okay. After you catch the ball, put it to your chest like that, and roll it underneath, and then I grab the glove with my stump. But I don't have a stump. Well, then just let it fall. Then you pull your hand back, and there it is. Okay? Okay. Now you try it. I'll never be able to do it. Try it again. I can't. You can if you want to bad enough. But you mustn't cry. Ever. Here. Try it again. But what if I can't? What if I just can't? Hey, when you were a little tiny kid, you learned to walk, didn't you? Yeah. And to talk? Yeah. Bet you even learned how to eat jello with a spoon, right? Yeah. Well, this is a child's play compared to that stuff. You're a whole lot bigger and a whole lot smarter now than you were then. So it figures all it takes is practice, right? You're right. Okay. But, Pete? Yeah? Why is it bad to cry? What do you mean? If something hurts. What's wrong with crying if it makes you feel bad? Thank you. There you are. Thanks. Pete? Yeah? When you were a boy, did other boys make fun of you? Yeah, sometimes. Why? They're giving you a hard time? Some of them. Hmm. Why do they want to be so mean? Sometimes I think boys like that help us more than anybody. How? By making us want to show them up. 
Guys like you and me, we gotta try ten times harder than other people. Boys like that make us put out the effort. Maybe. But I still don't see why they want to hurt us. We never did anything bad to them. Just sit down. Well, maybe they see us and it scares them. They say, what would I do if I only had one arm? They see us and it makes them realize there's no guarantees. Tomorrow they could wind up in the same boat as you and me. It scares them silly. But it's still not fair that they're mean to us. No, it isn't fair. But maybe if we understand why they act that way, we won't hate them. Sometimes when people are scared, they do and say some pretty stupid things. I ought to know. And it's not because they're scared of me? Well, maybe they're scared you'll show them up, be better than they are. Some people are like that. It's not because I'm bad. You're not bad, Nelson. You think you're bad? I thought maybe that was why God punished me. And took away my arm. all that stuff I showed you. I will. You'll be proud of me. Already am. I wish you could come with us. Yeah. Maybe one day if I get real good at all the stuff you taught me, we can play on the same team. Wouldn't that be great? Sure would. Shoes at the top. okay. You? Yeah, but it was sad. Especially that part when the old man got to the train station too late to say goodbye to his grandson, and then the boy went off to war and he got killed. He'd have got killed anyway. Maybe. Why are you being such a cynic? I'm not. I'm just being myself. That's not true. For a while, when Nels was here, it seemed like you were. up. I was nice to a little kid, that's all. Yeah, and now you miss him. That's natural. You could have a kid of your own someday. <laughs> not me. Why not you? I'm not cut out for it. Mm -hmm. Don't be so sure. In some ways, you remind me a lot of my daddy. That's funny. I never think of you having a father. <laughs> well, thank you very much. It's not the way I meant it. <laughs> well, what did you mean? No, I just mean uh, I never think of you having a family. You never mentioned them. You never ask. All you ever talk about yourself, baseball, of course. You really don't know much about me. Is there something I should know? Well, for starters, maybe you ought to know that I was engaged to be married once. His name was Woody Chapin. What happened? Guadalcanal happened. I'm sorry. 
I used to pray that Woody could come back with just an arm or a leg missing. I didn't have the satisfaction of losing my arm in a war. It always comes back around to you, Pete, doesn't it? That's all you ever think about yourself. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I feel sorry for you, but it's not because you're missing an arm. No? No. No, it's because you're missing so very much more. You know, you're really something. I mean, when I want a sermon, I'll go to church. I don't need this. Dear Pete, I'm glad you're doing so great this season. Sometimes I read about you in the newspaper. I wish I were special like you, but I know I'm not. I keep messing things up. What I really wish for more than anything is that I could be like I was before. Good as new, like everyone else. Sometimes I'd like to be invisible. Dear Nelson, I know how you feel. Sometimes I wish I could be invisible too. But believe me, if you work harder than anyone else, you can accomplish anything you want. Take yesterday, for example. First, I found out I was voted most valuable player. And then, a stranger came to see me play. Safe! That's ace hit by Gray, ties the ball game up and brings Rundles to the plate with the lead run at first. Lively checks his sign, comes set and goes to first. Gray's back easy. Lively will be careful with Gray, who's still in 66 bases this year, to set a league record. Lively looks in, comes to the belt, and there goes Gray. Peppa Thomas is through. He is not in time, and Gray is in there with another stolen base, and more importantly, lose a potential winning run into scoring position with nobody out here in the eighth. Pete Gray, if I'm not mistaken. Dan McGregor. That's right. Is that supposed to mean something? Well, that depends on how interested you are in playing Major League ball. Well, what if I'm real interested? And I'm the man you want to see? I'm a scout for the St. Louis Browns. So what do you got to say to that? It's about time. What took you so long? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you going up to the Browns? Yeah. Well, uh, congratulations. Thanks. I guess that means I'll be back in the starting lineup next season. Yeah, I guess so. Well, uh, I'm glad they picked the MVP. You are? Well, yeah, well, sure, you see, uh, it means you took the best damn player in the league to, to beat me out. Even if he's only got one arm. You only got one arm, Gray? Shoot. <laughs> Who you kidding? <laughs> hey. Good luck. Same to you. been gone a long time. Looking good, champ. I'm not the champ. Not yet. I need a... Trainer. Right. Going to the majors, Whitey. Couldn't have done it without you. I helped. You helped. <laughs> Remember all this? 
with patch over his right yeah. eye. He won contest in paper. He won thousands of dollars. He went to see Foreman. He told him. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. It's true. I would do the same thing. Thanks, Mama. <laughs> what about you, Mama? You miss work? Oh, not a bit. <laughs> Thanks to you, Peter. And besides, your father keeps me plenty busy. Oh. <laughs> well, now that I'm in the majors, I can send even more money. Oh, don't you worry about us, Peter. So, when are we coming to uh, this St. Louis to watch you play, huh? You're not coming to St. Louis, Papa. You're going to come see me play in New York, Yankee Stadium. Uh, House that Ruth built. Ruth who? Babe Ruth, Mom, the baseball player. Oh. <laughs> Ruth who? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just when you thought you saw it all, there's a new outfielder for the defending champion, St. Louis Browns. His name, Pete Gray. Oh, by the way, he's only got one arm. You don't believe it? Well, Gray made believers out of the Southern Association last season, tearing up the league, garnering MVP honors. Now he's bringing his amazing act to the big leagues. People all across the country are flocking to see this young man from Manicoke, Pennsylvania. Pete is still having trouble adjusting to Major League pitching, but he's already become a fixture in the outfield. Oh, what an inspiration this young man will be to those boys who are being shipped home from Iwo Jima and Normandy, missing an arm or a leg. He's not doing too well. It takes a while, getting used to new pitchers, new parks. You making excuses for him? Pete Gray doesn't need me or anyone else making excuses for him. That man is playing Major League Baseball. Now, how many people do you know with two arms is doing what he's doing? Sounds to me like you got it real bad. <laughs> I'm just saying credit where credit's due. Heck, <laughs> if I'd lost an arm when I was a little kid, I don't know what I'd have grown up to be, but I sure couldn't have done what he's done. And another thing. When Pete fell off that truck, yeah. he was right-handed. On top of everything else, that little boy had to teach himself to be a lefty. Amazing guy. Mm -hmm. Dear Pete, you're right. Dad and I play catch every day, and I'm getting better. They don't even pick me nast anymore. I miss you and Annie. Dear Nelson, dreams can come true. After a couple of days off for the All-Star break, we go to Yankee Stadium. This is what I've worked for all my life. P.S. I miss Annie, too. You didn't need anyone or anything. So did I. But I miss you. Oh, look, I've been a real jackass. You've been a what? Can you ever forgive me? Yes. Bill Nolan. Good to meet you. The boys are really excited about your visit. Yeah, well, your old pal here said she's gonna kick my butt all over Memphis if I didn't come down, so... <laughs> yes, I can see where Annie could terrorize you. Look, uh, I'm not exactly sure what I should say to these guys. Just let them see you. It'll be enough. Okay. Matt, this is Pete Gray. Plays baseball for the St. Louis Browns. Uh, 
I guess that's the first ovation ever given to a guy hitting 227. <laughs> we wanted to make it a standing ovation, but due to circumstances beyond our control. <laughs> to the housing shortage, I have a roommate sleeping on my living room sofa. Oh. This war's got to end soon. It's gone on long enough already. There's a baseball game that'd call it on account of darkness by now. Sure. Ah, wonderful. Me Good too. Night. There's money in my pocket. Take over, Don. Don't blow it. What's up? There's no nice way to say it, so I'm just gonna say it. I gotta go with hands only tomorrow against the Yanks. He's batting 290. I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. Hey, I spent my whole life asking to be treated just like anybody else, like any other ball player. Getting what I want, can't very well gripe about it, can I? Can you do something for me? Sure, what do you need? I got a lot of friends and relatives coming to see me play in New York. You think he'd get Kenzoni to play with one arm tied behind his back? They'll think it's me. <laughs> Thanks, Pete. Father of Pete Gray. Thank you. Okay. Hey, Pete. Papa. Eh? How'd you get in here? Oh, no problem. I just told him I was father of Pete Gray. <laughs> I never see such big building without no roof. <laughs> Sorry, you and Mama had to come all the way down here for nothing. What do you mean for nothing? Eh? Look at you. Men with one arm in Major League Baseball uniform. You know what that is? That is miracle. Papa, I wanted to play for you. Ah, so you... You play tomorrow or day after. <laughs> Don't matter. What matters is you made it, Pete. This is Yankee Stadium. I wanted to play here, not sit on the bench. Do you know that in mines, <laughs> I am number one celebrity? It's true. Only because I am father of Pete Gray. Every day is the same. They say, how is Pete doing? Oh, I hear Pete made great catch. Hey, I hear Pete went three for four every day. Good thing you won't be there tomorrow. 
Hey, I hear Pete rode the pines at Yankee Stadium. You know, uh, your mother, she <laughs> collects newspapers from all over the country. It's in big book. It's true, all she talks is baseball. And to think that your mother and me, we, we never even hear of baseball until we come to this country. And now, our boy, Pete, is big leaguer. I uh, know. But... Uh... No, no, no. No bad speech. Well, after your accident, you, you could have given up. You had good excuse. But you never did give up. Never. No matter how much they laugh at you, no, no matter how, how many times they close the door in your face, you never did give up. And you became somebody. That is truth. That you must know. You became somebody. Thanks, Pop. It's a beautiful day here at the big ballpark, and this one should be a dandy. The defending champion, St. Louis Browns, against the New York Yankees. Leading off with the Brownies today and playing left field is Phil Canzoni. Many of us are excited to see Pete Gray, but Gray hasn't been hitting, and Canzoni has. So Canzoni gets the nod. Lou Finney will bat second. Batting third in center field, Milt Burns. In the cleanup spot, the outstanding shortstop, Burns Stevens. It's so big. <laughs> Oh, wonder the are is bringing the plane here. took it all last season, but the Yankees, well, they're bound and determined this time around not to let that happen again. We're in the bottom of the fifth, all tied at five. The Yanks have two on with two outs, and Oscar Grimes stepping in to face Hollingsworth. Grimes batting 260 already has a double on the day. Hollingsworth, he's been struggling. He checks the runners. Here's the pitch. Grimes drills in hard to left field. It is hit a ton. Canzoni on a dead run. Oh, he makes a diving catch. Wait, ju wait just a minute. Canzoni is down and may have hurt himself on the play. Just how badly remains to be seen. The question now is, will Phil Canzoni be able to continue in this ball game? The Browns trainer is out checking on Canzoni. Oh, my. It looks like that'll be all for him today. So with the injury to Canzoni, it looks like we're all going to get a chance to see the man many people at Yankee Stadium came out hoping to see, Pete Gray. We're in the top of the seventh inning. These teams are still locked up in a 5-5 five, five tie. The Browns have two aboard with nobody out, and Pete Gray heading to the on-deck circle. This will be Gray's first at bat since he replaced Phil Canzoni in the top of the sixth. What an important game for the defending American League champs who desperately need a win today if they have any hopes at all of staying in the pennant hunt. Here's Pete Gray to face Walter Monk Duviel. Browns with runners at first and third. Duviel comes to the set, checks his runners. Here's the pitch. Gray lines a single to center field. Here comes Mancuso with the tie-breaking run. And the Browns take the lead on an RBI single to center by Gray. St. Louis still has runners in the corners as Milt Burns steps to the plate. Burns still looking for his first hit of the afternoon. He looks down to the coaching box to check the sign. Duviel into the stretch. Gray with a walking lead off first. And there he goes. Robinson's throw to second base is not in time. And the Browns have now moved runners to second and third. 
Dubiel is in a jam. Here's the no-ball one-strike pitch to Burns. Burns shoots a line to right. Courage will score easily. Here comes Gray. Walks his throw to the plate. It is cut off. And the Browns go back to an 8-5 lead on timely hitting and the speed of Pete Gray. Bases are loaded with Yankees here at the bottom of the ninth. They've already pushed one run across. They trail by two. Two outs now. The Yanks here. Spinner and Robinson facing Holcomb on in relief. Holcomb from a full line. Here's the 1-1 pitch. Fastball in the dirt. Ball two. Boy, Robinson has power. He can hit this thing with one swing, and everybody in Yankee Stadium knows it. Holcomb is ready. And 2-1 pitch on the way. But this one on the wind bottom of the Yankees. Way racing back, but he's running out of room. This ball is going and going. It is cut. At the barrier by Pete Gray. How about that catch? The Browns win at 8 6. And oh, what a day this has been for Pete Gray. Nelson Gary Jr. was named to the San Fernando Valley All-League Baseball Team. Pete Gray's glove is now in the Baseball Hall of Fame, Cooperstown, New York.